Good afternoon, AI fans, and welcome back to beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada. We're here at the end of day three of Dell Tech World, and it has been an absolutely fantastic week. My name is Savannah Peterson, delighted to be joined by the one and only John Furrier. John, thanks for being here today. Thanks for having me on this great program. <laughs> yeah, thanks for creating it, so, so we all could. We're playing AI, we're talking AI, and I'm really excited to talk about AI on the edge with our two guests joining us from Dell today. Pierre Luca Ciadelli, thank you so much for being thank here. You. And also so, Greg Finland, thank you. First time on theCUBE. Thank you for having me. How's the show going for you so far, Greg? It's going great so far. We're seeing a lot of interest in the Dell AI factory. It's the beginning and ending of every conversation, so it's been a great, it's been a great week so far. Have you talked about anything else this week? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've been, we've been glowing with the, I've been a huge vocal um, proponent of the, of the AI factory positioning. Every call I've been on with the Dell folks, like definitely hitching the wagon to NVIDIA is, is a great call. It, it sends a statement, it means something different. So what is it? What is the AI factory at the edge? Well, I'll talk about AI factory more broadly and then I think we uh. can pivot to, to the edge. When we talk about the AI factory, we draw the analogy of how it's similar to how a factory was, was built before, where you're taking raw materials, you're turning them into a finished product that comes out the other side, only now we're using raw data from, a, from an enterprise customer's data set to generate new outcomes that they couldn't have generated before. Um, Huge new set of use cases for yeah. our customers, super exciting. So we, go, we start with that analogy, and then we start talking about how do we get the, from those use cases to what is it going to take to go build that out. Uh, we talk about the infrastructure layer that's going to be required to support it, whether it's uh, uh, high-speed servers or performance storage or edge devices to deliver that outcome. The massive set of ecosystem partners we continue to expand to to support these use cases with some of the new announcements that we made this week. And most critically is I think the services that sit on top of it that help customers on that journey. And we spent a lot of time this week talking about the NVIDIA AI factory, which is a, or the Dell AI factory with NVIDIA, apologies, uh, which is a really good example yeah. of a specific set of capabilities that we're bringing together under that umbrella. You know, at, at GTC, Jensen Wong, CEO of NVIDIA, showed the super server, I call it. It was essentially a monster rack with like a huge spine, a bunch of leaves out, basically clustered servers in my opinion. They look like a bunch of servers clustered together. Um, that's the future. That is to me going to be the kind of systems we're going to be looking at. Is that like the, the poster child for the AI factory or is it something more specific? Or is it just a collection of servers? How, did, how, how should we scope in our mind what the AI factory is? So I think it's important to look at it from, a, from an enterprise perspective. It's not just the servers. It's the complete set of capabilities that we have to bring together to, bu to build one of these solutions. So when we talk uh, to customers about the AI factory, it is servers, it's networking, it's storage, it's data protection, it's workstations, it's laptops. What are all the set of capabilities? When you look at a large enterprise, there's a lot of different workloads and they're each going to have their different requirements. So that will scale from uh, what we announced with the, the, the Microsoft Copilot offerings and the new laptops, all the way up to these massive scale out systems that are being built to support very large uh, workloads for training and things like that. Really, is a, it, it's a complete ecosystem. It's a, it's a huge part of the conversation today, but it's, yeah. not just, it's not just one component, it's the whole shebang. Speaking of components and shebangs, let's talk about AI at the edge. What have your conversations been like this week? Yeah, no, he's absolutely right. Uh, um, we speak about the factory AI, and I think Michael said on stage, how you feed the beast, mm -hmm. right? And so, <laughs> when you're thinking about that, uh, uh, AI at the edge has been there for 20 plus years. Now, the AI at the edge is not generative AI yet. It's uh, more about uh, models that they've been training for many, many years, very precise. But the challenge is how, now that you have all this power, you can move this model and retrain the model. And so there is a, a huge uh, opportunity here, especially using Native Edge, because if I visit a manufacturing floor today, for example, and I have a, um, uh, a, a solution that with camera that look at the operator, how he puts the cable and stuff like that, and the models start to drift. What is going to happen in that case, I have just a line, a siren goes up, the line stop, and the operator need to decide, this is a good image, not a good image. So everything has stopped it. And I need to retrain that. What, how is happening today? It takes me two weeks. I need to send someone, call someone, he needs to come down on the USB, take the picture that they are wrong, go in another things, connect the things, and then hopefully he has a factory AI, but 
in many cases it doesn't have that, and it needs to do all of this again. So with Native Edge and what we announced, obviously with the NIM and, and, and VDIDIA, is the ability to have a blueprint that can connect and transfer and create a unique CI CD pipeline that connect Edge Core and Cloud. At that point, not only I can feed the Vista, beast, beast, <laughs> but I can also start to do generative AI. The generative AI that we think in at the edge is not exactly what we think here, you know, the cube has, is on AI, you just told us, <laughs> yeah. but is also for the machinery inspection, things like that. Today, for example, if you're doing inspection of a bridge, you focus only on the corrosion of the pipe or a very specific thing. Now, you need to go to a multimodal kind of things because you may have a branch tree, you have many other things. Normally, for retrain those models and make them more generative AI, you need to spend months. And right. so now we can connect to that edge, we can bring the things. And last but not least, you know, where the information are important, another concept that probably we spoke here <laughs> more than 12 years ago, is the data gravity. Mm. Where are the models important? The model are important, the data are important, where you need to do something with that data. And guess what, at the edge, if you have a manufacturing line, if you are in a store, the moment yeah. that you need to analyze and take action is there. So yeah. inferencing, it's absolutely key in that point. The data gravity piece is interesting because we want to come back to that because with data gravity, that's data. Now you got metadata yes. gravity. Whole yes. nother level of, because edge, Different. you need the metadata. Correct. You can't move all the data, so the metadata is good to have on that By, by the way, uh, that's introduced another things that we will see in the years to come, right? When uh, you want to keep the data where they are, first of all, you want to save only the data that you you need mm -hmm. and important, so you need to have the metadata, but the other things, you need to be able to federate, so you don't yeah. move the data to another place, but you can use the power of the edge to process all this data. Let's talk about, na put a little more color on uh, native edge, because I think of native edge, I think of edge native, like cloud native. Um, so that, that environment will be relevant, obviously. Yeah. So, so and, and specifically, the NVIDIA relationship. Correct. Which announced a 10 to 1 stock split this morning after their amazing earnings results. So, I mean, obviously doing well with NVIDIA. So, the NVIDIA partnership with Native Edge, and what does yes. Edge Native mean? We didn't build a little Native Edge just for the <laughs> stock, but obviously we're solving <laughs> the problem Your stock's doing, doing good too. But, but you know, uh, the things that uh, you see, right, the, um, uh, what, what Greg speak about the, um, the AI uh, factory, the AI factory is still in a data center. Now when we go outside of the data center, of the wall of the data center, is the land of no one. So you need to have the right hardware, but also there is no skill, so IT is not present there. And you need to support not one device, but thousands of devices. You need to have security, you need to have zero touch. Yep. A native edge address all of that at scale. So allow us to go in place where there is no connectivity, but be able to bring whatever you need. With NVIDIA in particular, this is the first platform in the market that can do that. We can package this in the blueprint technology. If you remember, we spoke about uh, last year that we acquired a technology, we acquired a company, Cloudify, back in, a, in, a, in a last year, and we introduced that inside of, uh, of Native Edge. So not only Native Edge allow you the zero trust, and the security that you need for the manufacturing, the retail, but also allow you to transport all the packaging and all the receipts that you need for deploy AI. And this is very important, yeah. Yeah. because with the NVIDIA, for example, and NIM and all these other AI things that we see, things change every day. So you need to have an ability to change the only the component that you need. The security is another important thing. If someone calls you today, you are in a store, someone call you and say, I have a problem with one of the package, it takes days to get to that package, you need to shut down the thing. With Native Veg, you can just use the blueprint, redeploy the things, and done. And it's an important tie back to the, the data center part of the AI factory because you're going to be developing new models, you're going to be testing out new models, you might be fine tuning it, but you need to be able to push it out at scale to your production sites, for example, or, or whatever your edge location is for your business. So how these things combine together in the broader AI factory is super important because there's a lot of things that need to happen in the core data center 
and there's a lot that needs to happen out to the out to the edge and being able to coordinate those when we bring these technology Absolutely. stacks together, it's super yeah. powerful for yeah, our Greg, customers. We just interviewed um, one, one of your customers that did the HPC Innovation Labs, uh, Northwestern Chris, Medicine, yeah. she yeah. was amazing. They, their vision is the AI factory in the location of the healthcare provider, the hospital. So they're right. doing x-rays, yes. they, do, they do that 40% increase, they just had massive success. And by adding more GPUs, they can get multiple dimensions on the pictures. So CTs are next. So that's an example of the on-prem data value. 100%, and I think it, it really gets back to the use case piece here, where it's very specific to each customer. So yeah. Northwestern Medicine had a very specific problem that they were trying to solve and increasing their productivity of their x-ray processing, and it, it worked spectacularly for them. So I have to ask you guys a question since you're here. Um, On-premise is coming back, I'd love, I mean, it's, it's never really left, right? So okay, <laughs> cloud had its day, it's still rocking and rolling, Amazon's doing great, Azure. But the on-prem debate is, is it repatriation or net new? So maybe it's a repatriation for optimization, spend, or whatever, but AI is a whole nother category. Jensen even said it at his, his keynote at GC, NVIDIA GTC. This is a new category. So it implies net new spend, or is spend shifting. So how do you guys see that? Because the use case of the medicine uh, hospital place is a good one, because that's, I mean, it's a pain point that they can't get it done faster, but it's a net new capability. It, so, it is. And their data's there, and not all enterprise data is in LLMs yet, so, so the, the, there's headroom for, for enterprises for, to, for, to launch their models. For sure, I, I mean, there's, a, there's so much enterprise data that's still sitting on premise that is valuable, and in many cases, it's the most critical data in, yeah. inside the enterprise. So we do see this as a very new paradigm in data centers and kinds of workloads, so there's a piece of this that is absolutely net new, and I think it'll be interesting yeah. to see, but when we look at it from a growth perspective, yeah. there's a lot of net new capability that's going to be required in the enterprise to support these workloads, and yeah. huge productivity gains and ROIs that will come from that investment as well. Yeah, you guys are subscribers to theCUBE Research, so you guys will get a copy of our report. We're going after that because we're trying to squint through the noise on the repatriation game, which we see some, but you know, cloud's got a great advantage, Savannah. We talk about it all the time, but on-prem, the IP is in the workflows. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and the edge the, is un, unexploited yes. yet. Uh, edge is a, a great opportunity. The data are at the edge. So the, the things is, uh, uh, I listened to the interview before, and also uh, I was meeting with the hospital that say the same thing, right? They want to harvest from different MRI machine that they are not speaking together right now. So that's why they're looking to use Native Edge to be able to uh, democratize this different ecosystem, and then they can collect all the data, and then they can put the AI capability to tag those data and do all the processes. So not only breaking the barrier that yeah. they have, but using what they already have. And all of us, we know, right, in our houses, in all our office, yeah. we have a ton of data, right? It's not that the data Maybe we have copy in other places, but most of the time we have five, six, seven, eight different copies of the same thing, and we make a tweak. So harvesting those data is very, very key. Also in Dell we're doing that, yeah, right? Yeah. It's, it's super critical. And I think, I mean, we've talked a lot about healthcare as an example, it's an outstanding example. Chris even told us of, the, of all the data that healthcare facilities have, they only use 3% of that data, which is shocking when you think about the picture of holistic health we could have if we had more of that. Can you give us some other examples outside of healthcare where we're seeing, where, where you're hearing that customer craving for AI at the edge in particular? Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, I think all the manufacturing, for example, that um, especially when you build a new manufacturing floor is not anymore to just look at the things that happen every day, but is the ability to monitoring and uh, describe an entire uh, it connect all the machinery in the world, for example. It's also see, but the data they don't leave, right? For example, what uh, I saw a customer of Dell, that um, they have a control room that they produce machinery for the entire world. They can control all the machinery from there. They can also call the customer and say to him, hey, by the way, your plant in Dallas is going below the threshold of other system. And all of that is done with the, with the AI but without leaving the key data from the edge. They actually not transport any data. And by the way, the back end, yes, is on the cloud and all of that, but the, the data stay where they are, they have the capability to tag in, and by the way, they use our uh, fantastic infrastructure to do all of this, so it's very important. Greg, for you, Greg, from your perspective, are you looking at it from the AI factory, from a data or infrastructure perspective, or both? Because we've been saying on theCUBE, 
that the action right now is infrastructure. Okay, chips are things that are getting faster. But the data layer, the middle layer, that's going to be disrupted, enabling, disrupted in a good way. Yeah. So how, how do you, what's your lens? Where do you uh, dig in for Dell? So, so I look at it sort of holistically. From, from my perspective, I always start back at the use case. At the end of the day, this is about generating new use cases for customers. Yeah. In order to go do that, they need the infrastructure for sure. Um, they need the ecosystem of capabilities through software partners, they need the services. But at the end of the day, it comes back to the data. Yeah. And when we talk to customers about prioritizing use cases, one of the most common things that we highlight as they go and prioritize is, always start your prior use case prioritization on where do you have good data, yeah. right? Because if you don't have good data, it's going to dramatically slow down your AI transformation efforts because you're going to spend a lot of time getting there. So there's a lot of opportunity yeah. there, especially as you look forward from yeah traditional structured kinds of data management to the kinds that are going to be needed for how do you manage document and in, ingest into these LLM systems. So it's an interesting new space that's going to continue to You just to get back your data into the system architecture. All right, now getting back more, I guess, more product oriented. In my mind, a server, was either, a server and a PC were easy to understand. I got a PC, great XPS right here, server power edge, I rack and stack them, top of rack switch, I feel good, that's IT. Now, an AI factory is like, you're the general contractor. You're building a lot of servers, a lot of networking, there's a lot of interconnects, we're seeing that at the chip level, and then also at the system level. Yeah. So what are they, what are customers buying from Dell? Is it a product? Is it a product number? Is it a, is it a, are you like a GC on a construction job? Or are you building the factory? <laughs> I mean, what are you, I mean, take us through the, because this isn't, I'm trying to visualize what the factory is. Is it, is it just a collection of servers that drop into the hospital, or is it much more like bigger, like the NVIDIA system that we saw, or a collection of little edges, so, and they're all connected with distributed computing, I get that, but what are you guys selling? So, so when we talk about the AI factory, there's, there's actually three different ways to consume it. You can consume it as a, as a solution, where we yeah. package everything together. Customers who are, are maybe a little bit more advanced might consume it as components that we sell to them, and it's a, some set of customers are going to be looking for it on a subscription basis or, or, or other consumption basis. But when we look at the customers who are looking at it on a solution basis, what we're trying to do is bring that all together for the customer. So it's a packaged set of server, storage, east-west networking, uh, yeah. data protection, the software stack that goes above it, and consulting services that go along with it to help customers on yeah, their journey yeah. get to the outcome they're going for. Yeah. It's not a packaged product in the way that we would think of a VX block in, yeah. in years past, but it is a, a specific system. set of configurations that sort of pre-engineered at a solution system level yeah. to get the customers so to that outcome. So it's got a spine and leaf, it's got all the networking in there, it's tied together. As multiple servers, like clusters, system one design. We're looking at cooling. We're looking yeah. at how do we rack and stack it. We're looking at the cabling, all the networking that's required, so that we can deliver that as an integrated system. We were talking earlier, Sue and I, with about the cooling pieces, really relevant. Varun was on earlier, and yeah. and we saw Jensen on stage. He's got a love in the cooling. You guys got that cooling product is pretty differentiating for Dell. It's been a big, big part of the the factory. Absolutely. Play. Yeah, the XE9680L is, is our latest form factor. It gets us from a, a 6U form factor with air cool down to 4U. It can handle the B200, yeah. wow. uh, so now we can hit 72 B200s in a single rack configuration with liquid cooling. Moves, moves us along quite a bit. Very impressive. Wait, we're going to bring scale. the speeds that and feeds to the cube, baby. We love our speeds and feeds. I, I know, no, I love it. We'll definitely be re invited back, that's for sure. Yeah. No, we love the speeds and feeds. See, well, this is what's key right now. We are in a build out mode. This is a yeah. product market. If you look at the changes, some of the other companies like Amazon Web Services, the leadership changes are happening. Product led managers are on the front lines right now because it really is a net new opportunity and it's build out mode. So products are critical, speeds and feeds, performance, specking, so it's, and we're seeing a systems revolution going on. Yeah, and not, right. not only that, at the edge yeah. you see that the new emerging products, they also come in, they are needed for low power. If you see the T160 that we announced here, that is a enterprise tower that can be at the edge, but more and more you're going to see in the future, all the train, uh, sorry, inferencing will surpass training. So you need a new set of, uh, uh, of power in the edge that doesn't yeah. needs or will have not, will have used GPU, but also a die uh, kind of things. We have an eye on Savannah, I've been talking on theCUBE many times since supercomputing two years yeah. ago. Yeah, yeah. Ethernet, I'm a pro Ethernet person, just for the record. <laughs> I'm pro Ethernet, just saying that. I love, I love, I love the other one, InfiniBand, but that's a whole different discussion. Ethernet will win. 
So Ethernet will be the network. If you say so, yes. Yeah, okay. of course. <laughs> <laughs> no, Infinity Man has a use case. Yes. They have different use cases. Yes. You can't really compare. Right. I mean, in the, monster, in the monster configuration with NVIDIA, Infinity Man makes sense for interconnect. But in the general, at large, at the edge, it's Ethernet. Yes, right? absolutely. So, it's not even, mm -hmm. uh, people, they not even switch to 10 gig at the edge, right? So, yeah. I mean, you need to think that you need to have a 5G capability, private yeah. 5G, LTE, you need to also uh, switch from one band to the other. If you have, for example, welding machine that create uh, inferencing, uh, interference with the thing. But also, uh, there is a new world there, right? It's yeah. like, uh, it's just in the infancy to be transformed, <laughs> right? So it's a, we, we will be in the future speaking about which factory we're going to build. Actually, you guys are a great duo here because the, the, the factory and then the edge together comes back to stuff that we've been covering, Savannah, client server kind of conversations, device at Mobile World Congress or CES, consumer devices, whether they're wearables or IOT devices on street poles or whatever, are now connected into the network. So you now have that neural network and full network. So the question is, what are we going to be seeing? Every show's turning into an AI show. Yeah, you know, Mobile World Congress is turning That's into an AI sure. show. Yep. What are we going to hear at Mobile World Congress? Because if this continues to go down, it's only a couple more months away, uh, in Barcelona, about a half a year. Half a year. But, but that's enough time to get stuff baked out. You're going to see more AI factories going on. So telco, that's, a, that's an on-premise. What are we going to be hearing at like the Mobile World Congresses of the world as the devices start getting smarter? I, I think what are we going to hear? We'll be there, by the way, at the queue. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> maybe we're doing another interview there. Yeah, but uh, of course. you know, I don't have the crystal ball, but I think what we've already seen, and speaking with different telco, there is def definitely a, a huge interest in entering the enterprise space with uh, a solution and bringing the AI to the edge. And, and now telco also, uh, you know, define the edge in different way, but now it's starting to go to the functional edge and the far, far edge. edge. <laughs> yes, and that's where we are playing, right? And now we have a great uh, partnership uh, uh, that we announced, right, uh, with, uh, with uh, Nokia, uh, sorry, we're not with the. Uh, I don't remember right now, but <laughs> Ericsson. Uh, we, no, with the, with the, with the, um, we we announced a partnership where we can uh, really bring our, for example, gateway having a public 5G. For example, we already support LTE, and all of that will be orchestrated by uh, by Native Edge, right? Mm -hmm. So you can not only deploy the uh, the solution, but also you can now connect the functionality to the network, right? And I think that's very important because you are in a, some case out yeah. in the nowhere, right? There is no even the Ethernet cable. Right, right. I think that's, well, we look forward to continuing the conversation yes. then at MWC. This has been fantastic. Greg, Carol, thank, thank you, you so much for being here as always. And John, yeah. fantastic discussion as usual. Yeah, we love the edge, you know? Yeah, we do. <laughs> Living on the edge, <laughs> hopefully in a right on the way. Edge. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there is more edge than this. We have a data yeah. center, the main right. studio, that's our core. Core edge. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you, thank, thank you. Yes, fabulous. And thank all of you for tuning in to our three days of live coverage here at Dell Tech World in Las Vegas, Nevada. My name's Savannah Peterson. You're watching theCUBE, the leading source for enterprise tech news.